In the prior video, I demonstrated the process of building a trading dashboard, obtaining data from TradingView, and generating buy or sell signals. In this video, I will guide you on how to transmit these signals to a backend API server connected to a brokerage. In this demonstration, I'll be using eTrade as an example, but it's important to note that this can be implemented with any trading platform that offers API services. Here's what the API flow entails. Within Google Sheets, an action is executed that triggers the app script. The app script subsequently generates a payload containing the ticker symbol, action, and quantity. This payload is then sent to the API server, which has the necessary logic to process trade requests. In the API server, the payload undergoes processing and is transmitted to the eTrade client through a file. The eTrade client remains in a state of readiness to act upon the order signal, executing actions such as buying, selling, or canceling trades accordingly. Once the corresponding action is completed, a response indicating success, along with the order ID or cancellation status, is recorded in the order file for the API server to track the order status. Subsequently, the corresponding order ID is relayed back to Google Sheets for further reference. Now, let's observe the API flow in action. I will demonstrate placing a buy signal, although it will be queued due to it being the weekend at the time of this recording. Therefore, instead of executing a sell signal, I will use the cancel order function to ensure that both workflows are functioning correctly. During regular trading sessions, the sell signal can be employed in a similar manner. I have five windows open here, one for Google Sheets, two for running the API server and eTrade client, and two for executing eTrade server-side authentication and displaying order status. You might recall this Google Sheets dashboard from our previous session. I've added four ticker symbols last Friday, and you can observe that all the data has been collected in the other sheets, with graphs plotted accordingly. Let's take a moment to inspect AMD, which has generated a signal based on my criteria. To cross-check the price for AMD, we can quickly refer to TradingView, where the current AMD price is displayed at 107.7. And it matches with the Google Sheet as well. This sheet incorporates functionalities for both buying and canceling orders. Although the video does not demonstrate selling, the process for selling is analogous to buying, with the payload specifying sell as the signal. Within the trade function, the trade API is invoked with a payload that includes the ticker symbol, the desired action, either buy, sell, or cancel, and the quantity. In the buy action function, you simply call the trade function with a buy signal and provide the relevant details. The response from this call will include the order ID, which you then use to update the corresponding row with order details. Similarly, for the cancel action, you send the cancel signal. However, instead of specifying a quantity, you include the order ID in the quantity field to initiate the cancellation process. Let's shift our focus to the API server. The API server was previously showcased in my earlier videos, and I recommend watching those if you'd like to delve into the setup details. In this setup, I'm employing the screen application to keep my API server running continuously, even in the event of disconnection from the SSH session. Here, I've implemented the trade API, which is called from Google Sheets. This function essentially parses the incoming data and stores it in a file. Subsequently, I introduce a two-second sleep period to allow the order to complete. A more robust implementation approach would involve waiting for the eTrade client to signal completion, either by utilizing the file method or employing some messaging system to enhance reliability. The order ID, extracted from the eTrade client, is then read from the file and returned to Google Sheets for future reference. Let's run the API server now. Let's transition to the eTrade client window. In this video, we assume that you have successfully onboarded the eTrade client application onto your server. I intend to create a separate video to guide you through the onboarding process in detail. Once you've completed the onboarding, you'll obtain the necessary access keys, which I have configured in my environment. For the eTrade client, I'm also using the screen application to ensure it remains active and running continuously. The eTrade client awaits the modification of an order request file by the API server, along with the corresponding payload. This is managed by the file modified handler, which triggers the execution of the order function as soon as the file is modified. The wait for order function operates in a loop, awaiting the receipt of the order. Here, I've initiated the authentication process and established the account name. It's important to note that this process may require additional authentication steps when initially starting the application, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Once the authentication is successfully completed, this application will stand by for incoming order requests. Within the execute order function, 
we must first execute a preview order, and subsequently follow up with a post order, using the preview IDs. Once the order is successfully executed, an order ID is generated and saved in a file. Let me quickly show how the order functions are written. You can find links to all the code in the video description. I've implemented three essential functions, preview order, place order, and cancel order. These code snippets are streamlined versions of the Python API package provided by eTrade itself, presented in an easily comprehensible format. All the constants are derived from the const python file and will be dynamically replaced with the payload during runtime. For this demonstration, I'm utilizing the production API. The auth python file contains the initial OAuth function to be invoked when launching the application. To enhance security, the keys are stored as environmental variables and are not part of the code itself, following best practices. Now, let's proceed to run the Python eTrade application. As you can see, it prompts for additional authentication, along with a custom URL. Now, we need to copy this URL to the web browser for authentication. In my case, I already have another tab open with eTrade, and I'm already logged in. That's why this link didn't prompt me for a username and password, it went directly to the acceptance workflow. However, if you're not already logged in, you will be prompted to log in before the acceptance workflow appears. Once it does, you need to accept it and copy the provided key. This key is a one-time key and will be required every time you run the eTrade client application. Copy the code and paste it into the eTrade client window. You'll notice that the authentication is successful, and the trading account is also initialized. Now, it's ready and waiting for orders to be received. On the right side in the Power eTrade window, you can see that I have a number of cancelled orders. These are from the testing phase of this code prior to creating this video. All of our application windows are up and running, ready to execute the order. Let's witness it in action. Here, for AMD, I've identified a long signal based on specific criteria. I'm going to initiate a buy action directly from Google Sheets. Enter the quantity of stocks you wish to purchase and click OK. You can observe that the order has been placed and is currently in the queue. Please bear in mind that this is the weekend, so the order is in a queued state, under regular trading day, a market order would have been executed by now. The API server has received the payload and promptly written it to a file. Consequently, the eTrade client received a notification of the file modification, parsed the content, and executed the order within the eTrade platform. As a result, you can see that the order to purchase 10 shares of AMD is currently in the queued state. Additionally, note that the order ID 3431 is reflected in the Power eTrade, logs on eTrade client, and the Google Sheets document has been updated accordingly. Now, as I don't wish for the order to be executed upon market opening, I'll proceed to cancel the order. To do so, I'll select the Cancel action from the drop-down menu. Yes, the order is cancelled immediately. The process for selling is similar, except for the Cancel action, where you need to specify the order ID. For selling, you'll need to provide the quantity to be sold, just as you did for buying. I hope this has provided you with a clear understanding of how to create a trading adapter for eTrade. The same principles should apply to any trading platform that supports API integration. You'll find all the code in the description below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to watch similar videos and help my channel. Thank you. See you in another video.